But we just talked about what clothes to pack and I showed you that, that's on a separate video. This is how to pack your camera stuff to get it to Africa. And you just gotta do it. You gotta pack your stuff, you gotta schlep it over there. One, if you're coming with me, you don't need to worry about it once you get there because for a dollar, the guys will carry your stuff. The guys will take your stuff from the Jeep to your room, from your room to the Jeep, anywhere you wanna go. You don't need to worry about carrying your bag in Africa. You gotta get it there. You gotta get it to the airport. You gotta get it onto the airplane. You gotta get it to the Jeep the first time. But other than that, you don't need to worry about it. So I'm gonna tell you to go with the equipment that you want. Get a big lens, get a great lens, get great cameras and have fun with it in Africa because you're gonna go and you're gonna get amazing pictures. You guys have seen my safari pictures. They're out of this world. And if you don't have a great lens, you're not gonna get the great pictures. So let's take a look. How are you gonna get there? Two choices in my opinion. You can do a rolling bag. So this is a Manfrotto. You could do a think tank or a low pro rolling bag. And this bag, right, fits all the camera stuff. Now, the advantage of a rolling bag is you can roll it through the airport. The disadvantage of a rolling bag is my travels, sure I'm in the airport on every trip, but most of the time when I'm out, I wanna carry the bag, I don't wanna roll it. Because in Yosemite, Death Valley, when I'm on safari and out hiking, you can't carry the bag, you can't roll it, I'm carrying it. So I use a backpack. And this backpack, is, you know, Think Tank makes a great one. Low Pro makes a great one. I use the Low Pro. So this is a Low Pro Pro Trekker 450 AW version two. If you want to do a Think Tank, that would be the, the Think Tank Airport Extreme. Amazing bag, great backpack, works fine. Very similar in design to this. So you can see it's a big backpack and this is what we call an Air Max bag, which means this is a legal carry-on for all international and domestic full size flights. So this will fit in the overhead, it'll fit under the seat, seat in front of you. And that's a great way to go. So what do I have in this bag? First of all, I have noise canceling headphones. So I can plug it into my iPhone and I can listen to music, listen to a podcast, or help me go to sleep on the way. I have a paperback book so that I have something to read because to Africa, it's 20 hours, two 10 hour plane flights. I know if you, a lot of you are worried about that, don't worry, just go. Watch a couple of movies, have a couple of drinks, take a nap, before you know it, you're there. And then you're in Africa and you're looking at the animals and you're taking great pictures. It's absolutely amazing. So please guys, don't let the 20 hour air flight fool you or bother you. Next, my laptop. I always bring a laptop when I travel. Now, I still like a 15 inch. This is my 15 inch MacBook Pro. A lot of people are going to the 13 inches today, that's fine. And if you don't have a laptop and you don't wanna spend a lot of money, you can go buy a 13 inch laptop for 450 bucks these days. So it's not a huge amand of money. Now, if you're gonna buy a Mac, you gotta spend two to 3,000 bucks on it. And I understand that. A lot of you don't want a Mac, that's fine. Get a, get a Windows machine. But you have your laptop with you. Why is it important to have your laptop? Number one, I can look at my pictures every day to make sure my camera's working well. Number two, I can download the pictures from the memory card to the laptop and I have a second backup. And then I can plug my backup hard drive into the laptop and make a third copy. So I always have the memory card, the laptop, and a backup hard drive copy of all my pictures when I travel. And knock on wood, I have never lost a picture when I've traveled. Even though I've had cameras that break, memory cards have broken, and computers that have broken, by using that three-step backup process when I travel, my pictures have all been 100% safe. 100% safe. Impressive stuff. Now, before we open up the camera bag, I wanna show you a little bit of the stuff that came in the suitcase. So in the suitcase I have an Omni charger. Now this is a new device for me to travel to Africa with because this is a brand new device. This is a portable battery. And this Omni charger allows me to charge my camera battery about 10 times, runs my laptop for hours, charges my cell phone. I'm gonna carry it with me when I travel forever. So, because in Africa, some nights you're not gonna have electricity and you're not gonna be able to charge your camera. But this will allow me to charge a camera battery 10 times. I think that's pretty cool and a worthwhile device for a couple hundred bucks. In my suitcase, 
I carry my ditty bag of all my photo accessories. Camera battery charger, I take two battery chargers. All my cameras take the same memory card and the same battery. So I'm using on this trip to Africa, I'm gonna use Nikon D7500, Nikon D500 and D850. All of them take the LPE15A battery. I'll have eight of the LPE15A batteries on the trip and I'll have three chargers with me on the trip. Think Tank memory card wallet. I'm gonna be gone for, tw for, for 12 days on safari. I will bring 30 memory cards. Why 30 memory cards? Because I'm gonna have two active cameras at a time and I wanna have a brand new memory card in each camera each day. 64 gig cards is what I'm bringing, so I'm gonna bring 30 64 gig UHS-2 SD cards. Delkin Black, the best card on the planet, and that's the card I'm gonna use all the time. And I'll have two of the Think Tank wallets that'll hold those 30 cards. I have, this is a secret device for me, an extension cord. Now, you notice it doesn't have a switch, it's just a silly, stupid extension cord, because now I plug into it an adapter for the British or the Continental Europe plug. So now I have three outlets that I can use with the different power plug. When you go to Europe, when you go to Africa, you're gonna have one outlet in your room that you can use to charge all your devices. So now I can plug in and I can charge three things at once. This is a genius device. I discovered this on my first trip years ago and this is how it travels with me. I have a number of the Hoodman lens cleaners, lens cleanse wipes. These are amazing devices. They do a great job in cleaning your lenses. I'll have half a dozen of these with me. A ProMaster Jumbo Hurricane Rocket Blower for dusting my camera, dusting my lens. You can't take the canned air with you and this is the best way to keep your camera clean. Um, a little screwdriver, lens cleaning cloth, my memory cards, batteries, all that stuff, Nikon remote release. This is all in the little ditty bag that goes in my suitcase when I travel that holds all the camera accessories. Now, you can't put your camera batteries in the ditty bag in your suitcase. Lithium ion camera batteries need to go in your camera bag. I didn't pack them in there today, I forgot to do that, but before we go, I certainly will. This is the inside of the Low Pro bag. And right here in the top, those are three memory cards that I'll use during a day's worth of shooting, a pair of glasses, and I will have my eight Nikon LPE 15A batteries. If you're a Canon 5D guy, you're gonna have the Canon LPE 6 in there. So batteries in here. Got extra lens cap, a flashlight, a clean, a, a, an extra cleaning cloth, all that stuff in here. And this is my camera kit. And so in the camera kit, Peter, can you see the camera kit okay? Perfect, good. So I have two cameras that are active. So first, Nikon D850. My favorite camera, it's an amazing camera. And I always, when I go on safari, when I'm doing sports, when I'm doing wildlife photography, so when we go to Yellowstone next month or Africa in March or in August, camera with the battery grip. You know, we did a video not too long ago on the battery grips. I hope you all saw it. But having the battery grip makes the camera work a lot faster. I can go all day without changing batteries. But number one, I shoot here and then I can shoot here for portraits. And when I'm shooting wildlife photography, over half of my pictures are gonna be portrait perspective. So D850, Nikon D500. So by doing this, I've got the two latest technology Nikon cameras with a crop or DX sensor and a full frame sensor. The advantage of that is now I can change the perspective on my lenses. And I'm bringing three lenses with me on the trip. The first lens, 24 to 70. So this is Nikon 24 to 70 VR lens, the latest technology with the lens shade. Goes on there, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And this is I'm gonna use for portraits and for scenery photography. And this lens is gonna spend most of its time on the D850 camera because I want the wider angle view. 24 to 70, 2.8. Second lens, 
70 to 200 2.8. This is the new 70 to 200 2.8 FE version, the latest version. Once again, the protective filter, lens shade, all that right on here. This lens is going to split its time between the D500 and the D850. Because when this is on a D850 full frame, it's a 70 to 200. But when I put it on the D8, the D500 crop frame camera, it makes it the equivalent of a 100 to 300 lens. So now I've got 24 to 70, 70 to 200 on the D850, or if I change to the D500, I've got 100 to 300. And then my big lens is a 400 2.8. Now, Mark, I, you know you're going to ask me, oh my God, Mark, that's a $10,000 lens. No, it's an $11,000 lens. Why do you bring a 400 2.8 when you can get the Nikon 200 to 500 lens for $1,400 or the Sigma or the Tamron that zooms because they don't have the picture quality that this does. And this is a 2.8 lens. So I've got a 400 2.8 which means I can shoot in next to no light, I can blur the background, it's absolutely bitchin'. When I put this lens on the D850, it's a 400 millimeter 8X telephoto. When I put it on the D500, it's the equivalent of 600 millimeters or 12X. And then I also have in the bag the Nikon 1.4 converter. So I'm gonna put the the 400 on the D850 for a 400. I'm gonna put the 400 on the D500 to make it equivalent of 600, and then I can add 1.4 to that to make it about 800 and something equivalent millimeters. So I don't need a zoom lens, I've got options. And having options and better quality and faster focus is for me. So once again, four lenses, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, 400, and the 1.4 converter, all right here in the bag. Couple other things I have in the bag. Any, any questions about the lenses, by the way? All right, Hoodman loop. I don't go anywhere without the Hoodman loop. This allows me to check focus on the back of the camera. And finally, the last piece that I have here, and this is only when I do wildlife photography do I bring this. So in Yellowstone, Africa, Alaska, I bring a pair of binoculars. So these are my favorite binoculars. They're the Nikon Monarch 7 10 by 30s. You know, the Nikon 10x42 Monarchs or the Pro Staffs are bitchin' binoculars also. I like these, they're a little smaller, and it allows me to help see the animals, to spot the animals. Because one of my jobs on safari is to help the guide find you, the animals. And if I'm looking with my naked eye, I can see so much. But when I look with the binoculars, I can see even more. And you notice the binoculars have a red strap on them. This is the ProMaster leather strap. I really love it. It's red so that I can reach down into my camera bag and when I want the binoculars, I just grab the red strap. So all my cameras are color coded with different strap colors so that I know what is what. It helps me get what I need and get it quickly. Um, and the whole point is to be able to be organized. Now, how do I shoot with this when I'm in Africa? This is gonna sit next to me on the seat. When we go to Africa, we take a Jeep that's designed for nine people and put four people in it. So you're always gonna have an empty seat next to you and that's where my camera bag goes. And I will have the 400 lens with either the D850 or the D500 mounted to it all the time. And then my second lens, the second camera will either have the 70 to 200 or the 24 to 70, depending on what I'm trying to highlight. If I'm doing landscape photography, so we're in the plains of the Serengeti or in the Maasai Mara with millions of antelopes and zebras and wildebeests, and beautiful clouds and a rainbow, I'm gonna have the 24 to 70 lens on the D850 to do scenery photography and wide angle landscapes. If we're in a, in, a, in a corner where we've got a pride of lions and 12 lions sitting around, I'm gonna have the 400 millimeter lens on either the D500 or the D850, depending on how far we are from the lions, and the second camera is gonna have the 70 to 200. Because with the 400 lens, I want to make a headshot, a portrait of a lion. And then the 70 to 200 lens is going to give me the ability to pull back and see all 12 or 15 lions all at once. So it's all about what picture you see and how you see it. So we'll very soon have an online safari class. You're always welcome to come in down and ask me. We'll talk about techniques on safari at another time. But I wanted to show you my camera bag, how it's packed. And this is 100% airline compliant. I can carry this on. It's going to be a great bag to take with me. I've taken it. This will be the fourth time this bag's gone to Africa with me. 
Hope you join us one day to come to Africa, take some beautiful safari photos, and just have some fun. So it's Mark Komen from Paul's Photo concluding set two. Part one was how to pack your suitcase. Pack two, part two, how to set your camera bag. Look at both. If you have questions, send me an email, mark at paulsphoto.com. Post a comment here on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, wherever you see the video, and we'll be glad to help you get you all set up and on your way to taking beautiful pictures with us. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.